Lobbyists spend money on lawmakers every legislative session. That's just the way our state government operates. Now, this past session, lobbyists and their clients spent $151,000. That's more than $5,000 a day, actually, on meals, receptions, and other perks for legislators. Dan McKay highlighted those reports for the Albuquerque Journal. As citizen lawmakers, you know, translate that as unpaid. New Mexico's legislators rely a lot on the expertise of lobbyists. Expertise is one thing, but do lobbyists have too much influence over lawmakers. Is more transparency part of that answer? And Dan, fairly enough here, there have been a number of changes to lobbyist reporting. Are those changes effective in your mind as you watch, or do we have some more to go here? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think this is, you know, to me, and I've said this for a long time, this is a problem. This is a, a, resol a resolution looking for a problem. Um, you know, it, yes, it's gotten better. I mean, when I first got elected, you could write, you know, you could handwrite your finance report and write constituent dinner and, you know, and send it in. Right. You know, now there's there's significant more transparency. You know, I just think there's this, I mean, Gene, you know, even the intro to this story, right? Mm -hmm. That's a little more than $5,000 a day. Mm -hmm. There's 112 members of the legislature. Mm -hmm. And then there's another 250 staff members. Mm -hmm. And then there's another 100, at least 112, you know, receptionist secretaries that are working for those legislators. I mean, you're talking over a thousand people that are in the daily grind of a legislative session Spending five thousand dollars a day doesn't seem like an, I mean it just doesn't seem like a lot of money to me. I mean it does if you were like, hey, we you know we spent one hundred fifty thousand dollars a day. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean I just I think that at the end of the day, yes, the lobbyists have access. I don't think they have any more access than the average citizen does. Clearly, unless you're carrying a gun uh, to get into the Capitol and walk around. I mean, getting out to see your local legislator is not a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, I think that this is not a we've we've shown, you know, the attorney general, uh, the current attorney general has shown his desire to go after people that violate the public trust when it comes to, you know, whether it's state senators, whether it's uh, secretary of state folks. So I think. You know, I mean, I think at the end of the day, this is this. There's always going to be the hint of impropriety, but at five thousand dollars a day, touching on probably four or five hundred people a day. I mean, I just, I just mm -hmm. don't think that's a lot of money. Senator Snyder, would you agree with that? Is that uh, just it all that washes out at the end of the day? Just a little bit for everybody it doesn't have well, that much impact. First of all, anybody that thinks that buying me two pieces of pizza on the Senate floor at midnight is going to change my vote on something is absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, it took three for me. It took three? Okay. Yes. Well, you know, we all have our Everyone has a line. line. That's right. <laughs> but I, I look at it and they say, uh, the, the one they used to get me all the time about mm -hmm. was oil and gas um, and uh, banking. Right. And I'd go, well, first of all, I didn't suddenly become enamored with oil and gas because they gave me a campaign contribution. 80% right. of my family is in the oil and gas business in Texas, mm -hmm. or in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. So I already knew about the industry. I learned about the massive impact it has in New Mexico. So to say that, oh, she's owned and controlled by oil and gas is silly. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you come and ask, why do I support this? Can I kind of spin that around on you a little bit? Yeah. And Christine, uh -huh. I'm interested in your thought on this too. If we professionalize our legislators, they get paid, in other words, and have a paid staff, and we don't have to rely on those lobbyists as much anymore, is that the same thing for you? It just, is it just about that's information? The way, that's the way it works in D.C., right? They don't rely on lobbyists at all. Right. Well, I, I hear you. I hear you. Well, that's a good point. The, the thing about is it, it really the, just the, the information? Other quick point that I want uh -huh. to make is we learn very quickly. Uh, I was fortunate. I had lobbied before I became a senator. Right. So I was aware of most of the lobbyists. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are there that are professional lobbyists that are there all the time, or even I knew many of the uh, League of Women Voters or the uh, ARP people. Sure. They were the same ones every year. Sure. You learn which lobbyist you can trust. Mm, okay. Whether they, I had three categories. One is smile and nod because <laughs> I'm not tr believing a word you're saying. Right. Two is that makes sense, but I better verify. And the other was I can take it to the back. You smile gotcha. and nodded at me for seven years. I, I know. It's the oldest time. <laughs> that explains a lot, Senator. So now I get it. Christine Sierra, among the, amongst the biggest spenders, it might you know, surprise some people, conservation voters in New Mexico, Press uh, Health Plan, Comcast, University of New Mexico. But, you know, yeah. th these are not evil entities no. looking to get... And I'm not you know. going to use the term special interest because oh, that immediately oh. dismissed ah. the legitimacy of interest groups. Gotcha. I, when I taught, I called them interest groups. Gotcha. And yes, uh, of various, uh, from various arenas, corporate, 
unions, uh, nonprofits, uh, and everything in between. Uh, they try to influence mm -hmm. uh, legislators mm -hmm. or congresspeople. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of an equal opportunity to an extent. Uh, labor unions heavily favor Democrats right. and corporations heavily favor Republicans. So there is a partisan twist to there. But they will also go after incumbents in the sense of supporting who is influential, committee chairs and all of that. Yeah. And so it's way complicated. What I think is the concern is to try to reduce undue influence or unethical behavior. Right. And that is a really gray area. Right. It's a good thing we have an ethics commission because they got their work cut out for them. Mm -hmm. But that's a gray area. Mm -hmm. What basically we teach or I taught in political science was that, of course, interest groups want to uh, approach members with benefits. It's just that some have a whole lot more benefits to approach with, That's a good point. but at the same time, it's legislators will say, but that doesn't influence my vote on this particular bill. Gotcha. That is very difficult to prove. Gotcha. I happen to true. like Charles Keating from Arizona when he was busted for his yes. <laughs> unethical savings and loan approach to members of Congress. He, they asked him, does your money pay for influence? And he says, well, I certainly hope it does. That's right. <laughs> and so that's, right. that's the situation we're looking at, yeah. is that we can't be Pollyannish about it. That's right. uh, there is a place for transparency, absolutely, mm -hmm. for keeping members accountable yep. and insisting on some kind of ethical oversight. The point's there. You know, Julianne, the next report comes out in May, and I hear Dan's point that from a legislator's point of view, it may not be that big of an issue, but I'm flipping it around the lens from the public's point of view about public trust. What if it shows, I don't know, a certain legislator just takes a whole lot of money versus not a whole lot of money, the next person. Do you know what I mean? It, and how do we parse out? Having that system in place is very important. I mean, yeah. we have a, a tracking and reporting system for a reason. And I think right. it's important to note also in Dan McKay's report that he points out, hey, if you print out all the lobbyist reports and you add up the bottom line, you don't get the same total that the Secretary of State's system gives you. The difference that's, is almost $50,000. Yeah, that's not good. So that's concerning to me, and, and mm -hmm. it's not a lot of money, um, although $50,000 would change my life, and I think many of the people who yep. are wa watching the show. That's right. um, so that transparency piece is important for the public trust. It is important for the you know checks and balances. You won't know if a particular company has an outsized influence, as you mentioned, or an inappropriate mm -hmm. um, amount of spending and you know, I'm not saying speculating what that might be, but you won't know if those tracking systems you know, don't work. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's important. I also personally think that you know, Jeff Steinborn's idea that every lobbyist ought to have a name tag that explains clearly and very largely who they work for. I, I think of it more like a NASCAR, only it's like a jacket that has patches on it. You know, I think it, it should like just traders. be really... It look like traders in the New York Stock Yeah, market. what? I think that Green would be... jackets are all with PNM. Green jackets are all with PNM. <laughs> But, you know, I, I just want to say this, you know, the $50,000 mm -hmm. sounds, sounds like a big number. Yeah. And it is a big number. And sure. it's life-changing for anybody. Sure. When you break it down by 112 members, it's $446. So, I mean, I think, you know, we like to come out and say, we got this problem, there was $100,000 spent or $50,000 spent. I think we've shown in the last few years that when there's been things done awry, people taking money, people spending money illegally, people cutting deals, they've been prosecuted, they've gone after them. Mm -hmm. I think that we're working in the right place and moving in the right direction. Good stuff. We'll have, we'll have to do it for this week. Sorry, Diane, my fault. Thanks to all our panelists for brushing up on all these topics and for sharing their thoughts. I have a couple final thoughts of my own in just a moment.